once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Truth are not written on papers. Is that your con is that your 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 concept of reality? Truth cannot be written on paper. Pretty well. Huh? Pretty well. Really? Jesus says, the Bible says to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And God is seeking all those who are seeking him. And God is seeking those also who are sighing and groaning about the evil that are done on the earth and could not see a way out. And God is, has given us Jesus Christ who is the way out, the truth out of this system and the life out of this life. So Jesus Christ is the way, is the truth, and is the life. And no man can come to God except through Him. And He calls and bids you to come. All those who are weary, who are lost, and who are cut off, are called according to His purpose. And Jesus bids you to come and receive everlasting life in Him. There's only one way to God and that's through Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way, my friend. Because there is no other name under heaven given by God by which you and I can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. His name, His name through which salvation comes in his name the demons are cast out in his name liberation of those that are held captive by sin in his name are all the bonds released in his name in his name the devil has no hold on you in Jesus name eternal life is yours and you will not come under judgment. And so we, so I'm here to preach about the name of Jesus Christ. His name is a shelter for those that are, that have no shelter from the storm. The name of Jesus Christ is a shelter. It's a fortress for those who are struggling. And he's a, a fortress in a time of war, in a time of trouble. Is a pillar, is a foundation. But without him, without him, the righteousness of God cannot be received by you. Without Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a, as a ransom for you, you cannot know God. Without Jesus Christ, who died to bought salvation for all men, you will not know God. Because in His name, the Bible says repentance of sin and righteousness will be preached in His name. And in His name, all nations will hope in His name. All bonds will be broken in His name. All those who are weary will have strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Without Him, you will not have the righteousness of God. Without Jesus Christ, we will not have the righteousness of God. Because God has made Jesus Christ who knew no sin, that He may become sin for us, that we in turn may become the righteousness of God in Him. Because He had no sin, no sin has He committed. Jesus Christ was pure. He has not committed any sin, nor has any God been found in His mouth. When he was being persecuted, he did not open his mouth like a sheep led to the slaughter. He did not open his mouth. When he was reviled, 
he did not go reviling, but he kept submitting himself, subjecting himself to him who judges righteously, which is God, his Father. And because of that, his help, his cry for help was answered, and he went down into the grave, and on the third day he rose again. God raised him from the dead. So that death will not have any hold on him. Because it is written that you will not let my soul dwell in show. And you will not let my body see decay. God raised this Jesus Christ from the dead. And we... Many were eyewitnesses of him. And those eyewitnesses, as twelve apostles, they wrote about him. And wrote about what they saw and what they witnessed. What they experienced. And the many nations were turned over upside down. And many nations, many people became believers in Christ. Because they know that the, the, the gospel was the truth. They have not heard such thing ever happened on the earth before and so those who heard believe those who heard them believe and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ they are baptized for the remission of their sins and for righteousness sake and for appeal to God for clean conscience because any those that believe in Jesus Christ their sins who repent and believe in Jesus Christ, shall sins will be forgiven. Even the things that you cannot be forgiven under the law, in Jesus Christ you can be forgiven of. That is what grace is. The unmerited kindness. The unmerited kindness that God gives is what grace is. And God can give you that unmerited kindness. The kindness that you do not deserve. For the kindness that Jesus Christ paid for with His own blood. That is the kindness, the grace, the unmerited kindness that God would offer everyone that turn from their sin. Anyone that come to Him in faith and obedience, they will receive eternal life. And they will pass from death to life. And they will pass from condemnation to to freedom. Jesus Christ is that name. Jesus Christ is that way. Jesus Christ is that hope for all mankind. The hope that which comes through the front door. This is the hope that passes all understanding. This is the hope that comes the right way, the right path, not through the window. For those who come through the window, Jesus Christ said that they are thieves and robbers. They that come through the windows are thieves and robbers. And those that are called according to God's purpose do not believe such imposters. Those that are lost believe imposters. For so Jesus Christ is the way is the chief shepherd of the flock. He is the shepherd that will shepherd the flock of God. And he is calling every man, every woman to come to him today in, in obedience that he may give you eternal life. That you may fall. You may pass from death to life. Jesus Christ gave himself as a ransom for you. So that you and I can receive eternal life in Him. Free from the shackles of the enemy and not being buffered, buffered by every wind of doctrine. Not being buffered by all the trickery of man. Jesus Christ is the way, is the answer. Is the antidote to the trickery of man. See, mankind can lie to you. There are people... That wants to enslave you. And many of them have positioned themselves in the governmental posts. Many of them have positioned themselves in the government to enslave you. 
that Jesus Christ is the way, is the only Savior for you from those people. Jesus Christ is the only Savior from all, from all tyranny, from all evil. God bless. Jesus Christ is the only way, God bless. He's the only salvation. He is the Savior of the world. If you turn to Him, you will have eternal life. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will be yours. The peace that comes from God will be yours. And you will no longer live in agony, in rejection, but you will live in peace, in righteousness, and in hope with God who made all things and who calls you according to His purpose. Listen to the Word of God. Listen to the peace that surpasses all understanding. Give your ears to the Word of God. Give your ears to the truth. Save yourself from this crooked generation. Save yourself from the lies of the enemy. Come to Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. Put your trust in the Lord. For He cares for you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Fear God and give Him the glory. Fear God and give Him the glory. Worship God. Him who made the heavens. Worship Him who made the stars in the sky. And who call each, he call each one of them by name. Give your allegiance to God and God alone. Do not fall prey to the devil. Do not believe the devil and his ways and all his trappings. For the devil is the ruler of this world. The devil is the ruler of this world. Jesus Christ came into the world to set us free. To free us from the shackle of the devil. And right now anyone that is not in Christ Jesus is possessed is controlled by the spirit of this age the spirit of the age is the spirit of the enemy God wants to set you free he wants to release you from the spirit of this age the spirit that now dwells in sons of disobedience that is why the world does not know God that is why the world does not want to come to God because the spirit of disobedience the spirit that dwells in sons of disobedience is in them because the spirit of this world the spirit of the devil the spirit of the air the principalities are in control of their lives but when it's coming to Jesus Christ only the light of Jesus Christ can break through that darkness only the word of Jesus Christ can crash through that, that block and can set a man free from the shackles of the devil and can release mankind from the shackles of the spirit of this age, the spirit in the high places, the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. That is the spirit of the devil, the spirit that embed itself in entities and in governmental institutions, the spirit that embeds itself in, uh, in media and all kinds of things that propagates information and make people believe in a lie. The devil is at the helm of it. Any entity that make people believe in a lie is of the devil. Any entity that calls people to reject God's good news it's not of God, but it's of the devil. Any entity that lies to people, it's of the devil. Because the devil is the father of lies. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He speaks the truth to you so that you can turn from errors. The devil is lies to you so that you can stay in error. Who are you listening to? Which voice are you listening to? Are you listening to voice of God? The voice of God or are you listening to the voice of the devil? 
do not make mistake about this. You either listen, uh, you either listening to God or you either listening to the devil. There's no two ways about it. There's no middle ground. You don't have a middle ground. You cannot say I'm not listening to the devil. I'm not listening to God either. That's a, that is an illusion. You see, you're either listening to the devil or you are listening to God. Who is your master? And do not tell me that you don't have any master. Because that's an illusion too. That's a lie. We all have masters. We all have those we listen to. And those we do not listen to. Those whom you listen to and serve and take orders from are your masters. It's either the devil or it's either God. You can either listen to either. The devil or God. There's no middle ground, my friends. There's no neutral ground. If you either listen to the devil or you're listening to God. You can't listen to both. It's an illusion. You can't. You either, Jesus said, no one can slay for two masters. You either hate one and love the other. You don't, don't you know that human beings are created not to multitask? We can't multitask. Human beings, we have to switch our brain up from one task and switch it into the other task. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You cannot multitask. You cannot multitask, my friends. I can't hear you. Sorry? That's a sin against God. Why are you masturbating? Is that all that is uh, important to you in the whole world? Is a masturbation? Is masturbation the only thing that matters to you in the whole world? Huh? Sorry? It doesn't matter. Those who masturbate, masturbate because they want to get, they want to get pleasure because they're lonely. There's something missing in your life and that is God. And so you, everything in this life, is, there's a hole in your life, my friends. If that's all you think about, there's a hole in your life. If you don't know God, there's a hole in your life. And many people fill that hole with alcohol or drugs. They try to fill that hole with masturbation. They try to fill that hole with sex. They try to fill that hole with, with uh, homosexual practices or lazy being practices. But in my friends, they still come back empty because those things are not made to satisfy you, my friends. It's not made to satisfy you. The only thing that can fill that hole that void in your heart is God and God alone. So if you're masturbating, you are sinning against God. You are practicing sex with your hands. You're practicing sex with a dildo. That is evil. That's, that's sexual immorality. That is sexual immorality. God made you to be with a man. Find a man, get married, and stop living life like it's a foolish game. Life is not a foolish game. God created you to be whole. God created us to be whole. To be whole. God created us not to be lacking anything. But when we disconnect from God, that's when we begin to lack something. That's when we begin to lack. And what we are lacking is the disconnection from God. And so we try to fill it up with other things that cannot satisfy. So if you ask me, is, is masturbation a sin? Yes. So is homosexuality. So is lesbianism. So is lying. So is cheating. So is stealing. They're all sin against God. And like all sin, God will judge. But Jesus Christ came into the world to save mankind. Jesus came into the world and He died for your sins. He gave His life as a ransom for you so that you can have the chance of being forgiven so that you can have the chance of living with God and not living for yourself 
So those who practice sin are living for themselves, they're not for God. Did that answer your question, young lady? Did he answer, did that answer your question? That it's a sin against God. Well, I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm I'm No, it's the person who's telling you that is lying to you straight out. No. Why do you believe man rather than God? Well, if you take that advice from a man and God is telling you otherwise and you believe the other guy, that's you're taking a, you're believing man rather than God. We shall believe God more than man. Yes. Yes. Well, it's better to, if you're, if, if there's a, a dildo in your house and that's causing you to masturbate, well, it's better for you to burn that dildo, it's better for you to destroy it, rather than go to hell. That's what Jesus meant. If your eyes can cause you to sing, you, you better gouge it out. It's better for you to go into the kingdom without an eye than go into, with all your whole body thrown into the lake of fire. Which one is much better? I'd rather go to heaven with a blind man where I can get a new eye. Know that in heaven I will get a new eyes, my friend. I will not be blind in heaven. But Jesus is trying to tell you here to kill the desire. Destroy, kill that desire. Jesus was tempted. But he did not sin. So Jesus can give you victory over temptation. The reason why you have you been you tempted is because of your desires. Your desires are war inside of you. That's why you are tempted. But when that desire is not there, there's nothing to tempt. Fishermen catch fish with, uh, with the lore because the fish like the lore. So the devil, if you love masturbation, he's going to put that in front of you all the time. Because that's all that gets you going. And he uses it to get you. But Jesus Christ wants to give you power over that. So that you will no longer live in sin. But you will live in righteousness and you will find a husband and stop masturbating that is what Jesus came into the world to do he came into the world to set you free yes so if you are homosexual Jesus came into the world to set you free from homosexuality boo for who? you? why? because you don't love everyone I don't love everyone did I say I didn't love everyone? you just did how? I didn't say that. You said that. I don't have a filthy mouth like you. I don't say that. I don't use those kind of language. God loves me. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. Were you giving him finger? He loves you? God loves really? everyone. Really? He loved the pedophile too? <laughs> like, look at you. I caught you. I caught you. I got you. Remember? <laughs> Maybe not them. <laughs> It's interesting the way the mind works and commercial drives mind works. Repent of your sin, the Bible said, and turn to Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul. Because repentance will bring refreshment inside your soul. Jesus said that anyone that believes in Him, anyone that drinks of Him, out of Him will be gushing forth springs of living water, that give eternal life and Jesus is the only one who can give that to you and that is the Holy Spirit the, the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised those who love him and Jesus Christ can give the same to you today all you have to do is to repent of your sin repent means change your ways change your ways and turn to him Jesus Christ so that you can be you can have life change your ways repent change your heart change your mind change the way you live your life 
If you're living a life of lying, stop lying. Speak the truth. You will see that there will be a lot of weight lifted off your shoulder. And especially when you speak the truth, you don't have to think about what you said last time. You will repeat the same thing because it is ingrained in you to speak the truth. But when you lie, you have to remember what you said last time in order to keep the lie going. That is why politicians are very inconsistent because they are lying. And then when they get caught, they lie to cover it up. That is why when today, day and age, we have recordings. We can record what the politicians said before. And when they lie about it, you can play those things back to them. Jesus Christ came into the world to release you from bondage of lies. He came into the world to set you free, to give you the mind that speak the truth, to release you and give you a new life so that you don't follow the devil who is a liar and who is a manslayer from day one, who does not stand in the truth because the truth is not in him. The devil lies. He's the father of lies. Don't follow the devil. He's the father of lies. He's a father of lies. And you are a liar if you follow in him. The Bible calls the devil the father of lies. Jesus Christ is a father of truth. Follow him. Follow him and you will have life. Follow Jesus Christ and you will have life. You follow the lies of the devil, you you will die. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to God except in Him, through Him. Through Jesus Christ you can only find salvation. It's not found in Buddha. It's not found in Krishna. It's not found in any religious leaders. Mahatma Gandhi, Muhammad, or Muhammad as they call Him. It's only found in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. The righteousness we cannot produce because we are sinners. The Bible said that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have lived under the bondage and our, some of us are living under the tyranny of the devil. Some of us are living under the bondage of the devil, repeating every the same cycle over and over and over again. Some of us have wandered away from God and God is calling you today to return to Him before it is too late. Because a day is coming when God is going to judge the whole world. When he's judged the whole world by a man, Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. And in him, all sinners will stand before him on the judgment day. And each one will be give, which would be judged according to their ways. Each one will give account of their lives, whether they, what they have done in the flesh, whether it's good or bad or evil. So if you're practicing sin, Jesus Christ is calling you to repent and turn to Him today. If you're a man that is living with an, a shocked up with another man, Jesus Christ is calling you today to repent, to come to Him. And He will give you a new life, a new heart, a new mind, and a new personality, a new identity. If you are a person who is struggling with identity crisis, who does not know whether you are a boy or a girl, whether you are a man or a woman, it's a gender crisis, which is the lie of the devil today. Jesus Christ is calling you today. If you are confused about your gender, Jesus Christ can restore your mind and confidence in who you are. If you are a woman that likes other women, if you're a lesbian, Jesus Christ 
can restore your mind again. Jesus Christ can take away that craving that's in the mind, in the brain, and Jesus can give you a new heart and a new flat, new new mind. Jesus said, "God is calling you. If you're a witch, you like to dabble in our cults. God is calling you to repent of your sins and turn to Him. If you're a homosexual, God is calling you to repent. If you're bisexual, God is calling you to repent." and turn from your sins and obey his words and come to him with your burden and he will release you he will give you freedom he will give you his salvation he will give you victory over all those all those urges we all have urges we all have temptations but does not mean that you have to live and act it out but Jesus Christ can give you the power to overcome all those urges and impulses so that you can be a new creation. Whether you have homosexual impulses, whether you have a lesbian or bisexual impulse, Jesus Christ can remove those things. He can give you a new life, a new heart. He can restore your soul and mind that you will no longer be enslaved by your desires. That you can no longer be enslaved by your own desires. Because the mighty word of God is the truth. God can set you free from homosexuality. He can set you free from alcoholism. He can set you free from witchcraft from tarot card reading, from all the dabbling in the occult, he can set you free from false hope and worshiping false gods. If you are hopeless in Jesus Christ, you can have hope. Hope can be restored to your life. That is the beauty of Jesus Christ. That is the beauty of the gospel. That is why it is called the good news. That's the beauty of it. Because once living in sin can live in righteousness. Because the power of God to change is in you. The power of God to change is in Jesus Christ. And He can give you that power to change. Jesus Christ can give you that power to change. You cannot do it by your own strength. You cannot do it by your own by your own will. Jesus Christ can give you help. He can help you. He does not let you do it alone. Jesus said to his disciple, I will not leave you orphans. I will be with you. He said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will be with you from now on to the end of the age. So when you sign in with Jesus Christ, He will not leave you alone. He will not leave you by yourself. He will not abandon you. The devil is the only one that uses you and abandon you. But Jesus Christ will not abandon you if you turn to Him. If you turn to Him in obedience, He will be faithful to you to the end. Jesus Christ is faithful. He is the Son of God. And God is faithful. Because God is faithful, His Son is also faithful. Because God is able, His Son is also able. Because God is mighty to save, his Son is also mighty to save. Turn to Him. But Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only solution. He is the only solution for your life. Thank you very much. Hello. Sorry about earlier. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I, I get that a lot of times, so I, I don't keep count. So I, don't. I had a bad week at work. I don't know. I don't know, but why would you pick on a guy like me? I don't know. Huh? I've asked you to 
anti-religion. Huh? Anti-religion. Yeah. Right. So we all have our views in the world. I'll just keep it to myself. Well, anti-religion, uh, there's uh, religious freedom in Canada. So, yeah, sure. so religion is protected. So it shouldn't be anti-religion because... I, know, but I feel we shouldn't protect it. Huh? I feel we shouldn't protect religion. You should, we shouldn't protect any idea, ideas. Not religion, no. Why? What do you have about religion? Because I believe that the human consciousness gets closed down by religion. People close their minds now to other ideas about the world. So, so but religion. you believe in religion. Why are you anti-religion then? No, I don't believe in religion. Well, then that means you're also close-minded, too. <laughs> it's it's, no, it's no. contradicting yourself. Don't what you? What I really believe is that they shouldn't teach religion to kids. Huh? It's not fair to children to be brought up in a religious environment. Do you think it's fair for, for children to be raised uh, to be, raised to be uh, transgender? Uh, to be honest, as long as they don't change their body parts, they can do whatever they want. No, no. Do you no? Do you believe? Do you believe that it's just okay for children to be taught transgenderism and homosexualism at school? Yes, they do that yes. at school right now. But you're not okay with teaching children religion. No. Because I believe, that doesn't that doesn't I make in sense. Homosexuality, and I believe in transgenderism, but I don't believe in religion. So, so whatever. So you you bias them. Whatever you like, should be taught. Whatever you don't like should not be taught. Not really. What I that, believe is... That's what I, I think, that's what I hear you, I'm I, I, hearing I, I you think, saying. I think the topics... I, I believe kind of that this is, this is not... The Bible is a complete bullshit. This is, I'm just telling you my so, opinion. So, but you don't believe that a, somebody, that a man, that someone that says a man can have period is not, is not bull? I don't think you should be allowed to teach children things that aren't true. How, how do you know that, uh, how do you, how do you... I know Let, let's true. say for uh, trans transgenderism, what transgenderism is true? Well, that's scientific fact. So if how is it scientific that, fact? If they want to change that, a man can have period. How is that a scientific well, I mean, fact? Well, it's not. It's not a man can have period. They just change in their, their mind. Yeah, change their they have a female mind. A man might have a female mind. A yeah. mind have uh, have a. Uh, that's not science, though. But that's how they feel. They well, feel so, from inside. So, but but someone who feel that religion that they want to worship or you, 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 should, you should have them banned? A religion comes from outside. Really? Yes. You're really? given, like the Bible. So transgenderism is not coming from outside or homosexualism is not coming from outside? That's right. Really? Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. I really? know many, many homosexual people. And they are true sexual feelings for people that are their own gender. I know a lot of religious people that they feel this, they're very... They feel in their mind that they that what they believe is true. Yes. You what can. what's it, what yes. what makes it different because from what you say? Homosexuality is not taught. It is taught. No, that's where you're It wrong. is taught. People go to jail. People go to jail uh, heterosexual. They come out homosexuals. Why? And then they come back. They flip back to 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 heterosexual. That's because in prison they were homosexuals. So, so you're telling me that it's not taught? That probably are a very small portion. That's a small proportion. Really? Yeah, that's probably small Most portion. homosexuals are born that way. So, yeah. so you don't believe that Jesus Christ was a man, walk on the earth and live a life, you don't believe there's a God? Well, there's 10,000 different gods out there, isn't there? The false gods, yeah. There are yeah. 10,000 different currencies, and there's only one, one good, well, one the, real Canadian no, currency. Too, right? No. no. It's not being close-minded. Would you would you would you accept a counterfeit Canadian dollar if I give you a counterfeit Canadian dollar? Money is also just a figment. We were taught that money is just important. Money's not real either, is it? Huh? Money is not real either. We just believe it is. You disbelieve in it. Everybody in money. believes it. But you but you use it every day. I have to enforce it. It's the only way to survive. In how can you live this contradiction? You live your life is like it seems like you live a lot of contradictory lifestyle. You do, so, you do. So. Different opinions. Different opinion, but you want to shut down other people's opinion. I don't believe you should teach children things that aren't true. Really How do you know it's not true? Where do, what, where, where, where do you have to prove that it's not true? It's not. How? It's not. How? Just honest question. How do you know it's not true? I know it. You know it's not true. Oh, okay, thank you. Really?
Are you white? Are you are you are you a Caucasian? I seem to have that color skin. And Whether I'm a Caucasian or not, I don't know. Somebody no. gave me that label. Do you exist? Only for a short period of time. No, do you exist? Are you do you exist right now? You do you believe I'm talking to a a person? I'm talking to a, a robot. I don't know what I am. You don't know what you are. So so sure, so you right? are confused. We don't know. So you're confused. No, I know for sure. You know, you know who you know for sure that you're alive. I don't know about that. Because you what I know comes from inside me. So, so you it. don't know that you are whether you're alive or not, but you, but you hundred percent that religion is not true. Hundred percent. You be, you don't know you whether you're alive. You can't even you can't even figure I, out whether you're alive or dead. But I know. But what, you know about religion. I know when I hear. I alive. call that delusion. A, a religion is just something that somebody made up to control other people. Really? Yes, really. So every country, every society has all these different religions they use to control the people. And I know that is true. False religion religion or control. true religion? All religions because all they're religion. man -made. So all true, true spirituality is not written down on any piece of paper anyway. Really? That sure. Anyway, I don't want to have an Really, argument. really wait true spirit truth are only only uh believe it is not written on paper. Truth are not written on paper. No. Huh? Truth are not written on papers. Is that your con is that your 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 concept of reality? Truth cannot be written on paper. Pretty well. Huh? Pretty well. Really? So a lot of things that you believe today that are right, your right, that protect your rights and freedom are not true and they're not written on papers. No, I only have to follow these rules in order to survive in society, but I don't believe any of them. Everything. You don't believe it's just all people what people have to say. It's all different people's opinions. You don't believe anything. Pretty well. But you say you tend to you tend to believe in homosexuality and uh, and all of those things. You if think that they should wants give to have a right. Sex with another man, then he should have sex with another man. Well, that, that doesn't that go with religion? If somebody wants to worship uh, worship a god, why don't you let him worship a god? Why do you ha why do you want to? Like and then they have the right to also teach that to their children. Well, that I don't believe in. Though. Why why not? We do it all the time. I know, but they shouldn't be allowed. Well, if you if you have a son today, would you want him to believe what you believe? No, I want him to believe for himself. Whatever. To believe for himself. So if you have a boy, you want him to decide whether they're a boy or whether they can be a girl. Of course. It's it's their own choice. Exactly. It's not in their it's not their DNA chromosome had nothing to do with it. Gender had nothing to do with it. the fact that they have penis have nothing to do with it. Anything they want to do, they got this body. Unfortunately. They gotta do it, what they have to do. My friend, to my friend, you are walking contradiction. You are walking contradiction. So, and I speak to people like you all the time. Well, and and the fact speaking. is, the fact is, if people like you are in the government, we will be, we will have socialism and communism here. I, I totally believe in socialism and communism. Exactly. That's why I know, I know that from miles away. I can smell it from miles away. If people like you are the ones that will take away freedom. The re remove freedom, only reserve it for yourself, no, and then keep it away from other people. That's the people like you, and I talk to you, people like you every day. You hate religion. If you're not government, you will shut down every churches right now, like uh, like it's going right now. It's the people like you in the government that are shutting down churches, using coronavirus as as, a, as an excuse to try to shut down churches. Time to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, have a great day. Sorry. Yeah, keep your opinion to yourself. I'm I'm glad that you're not in the government. I'm not I'm glad you're not in the government. You are walking contradiction, sir. A walking contradiction. <laughs> this man yells at me. Yelled at me and then came back and apologized. <laughs> but still he's <laughs> walking contradiction. His mind is deluded. God has given him a spirit of delusion because of his hard-heartedness. God has allowed the error to go to him. God has given him over. I'm glad that a guy like that is not in government, but I'm also shocked that a lot of people like that with that same mindset are in our government. And that's the people we are listening to that are telling us to shut down, wear masks. And that same type of mindsets believe in socialism and communism. That's the kind of communistic mindsets 
Jesus Christ came to set us free from all of that. Socialism, communism is of the devil, not from God. Not from God at all. It's of the devil. The devil come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The devil does not like churches. The devil hates Christians. No wonder why communism or socialism hates Christians. They only want things for themselves. They have different rules for themselves and they have different rules for other people. But the people of God who, who know their God will stand firm in their truth. Because the truth, soundness of mind is on the side of the people of God. We walk in the truth, we walk in soundness of mind. But those who are of the devil, they live, they live in delusion because their mind and their eyes have been blinded and they cannot see the truth. And they cannot come to God and get healing. <laughs>